I participated in AI Scholars, um, I think in June of 2021. Um, and that was coming out of my freshman year of high school. Um, AI Scholars is really just an opportunity for me to sort of get familiar with um, artificial intelligence and the basic overviews of it. Um, I had no experience going into the program and transitioning into the one-on-one -on -one program. I took that program immediately after um, in the next summer. Um, uh, so that would be the summer of 2022. Um, the AI uh, scholars program really prepared me well in the sense that uh, it gave me base level familiarity um, with Python um, and then, uh, you know, Python notebooks. Um, I had had coding co experience before in the form of um, AP Computer Science A in high school um, and Java, um, but never, not, not as much with Python or in a research-based setting. Um, so I think that the way that we did it, um, just learning about using like NumPy and Matplotlib, um, and then some of the uh, AI network, uh, AI uh, libraries, um, it was great to step into the one-on-one -on -one program, you know, having at least a little bit of background. Um, and from there, I mean, I was able to use re resources made available to me by my mentor um, and just things that are online, um, reading a lot of articles on how to do things um, and really coming up with, you know, uh, things that I was interested in exploring within the one-on-one -on -one program. The project title was Machine Learning Algorithms for Consumer Plastics uh, Identification and Sorting. Um, that project was centered around uh, designing a neural network uh, or, a co or a computer vision neural network that would be able to identify um, the label on a piece of plastic that you threw into a recycling bin. Um, it was basically with the goal, it had the goal of um, identifying and then sorting um, plastics at, uh, you know, consumer's house versus before it gets to, um, a recycling facility, uh, because just a bit, a bit of background to make this relevant, but, uh, like most of the recycled, recyclable plastic ultimately does not get recycled because, um, there is, you know, unrecyclable plastics that is added into the batch that should be recycled. And that like messes up the whole recycling process. Um, so my thought was that if we could sort that out before it even gets to, a recycling plant, which is the point where, you know, people working there, there's a high degree of error, or if you have, you know, big machines that are doing it for you, those are costly and expensive and not very, you know, widely applicable. Um, if we can do it in, on a house per house basis, I think that that would greatly increase the number of plastics that are ultimately recycled. Um, and the way we accomplished that um, or investigated that was by uh, developing, you know, a uh, very quick and easy, like computer, just the idea was that we would have camera actively analyzing trash that, or plastics that you threw into this recycling bin. Um, once it identified it, it would then uh, in some way like sort it into a specific category um, and then recycling companies would pick it up as separated plastic already. Um, we used a, a support vector machine um, that ultimately utilized a polynomial kernel um, as like the best algorithm. The paper basically just investigated different types of uh, neural networks um, and like sorting algorithm or algorithms um, for identif identification uh, that would be you know, had the greatest uh, accuracy and efficacy ultimately. It made me realize that uh, the, what, you know, you do and the type of work you do in hard coding, hard AI um, is, you know, less aligned with what I think I had to, wanted to do long-term. Really, I found myself coming back to like, oh, I want to integrate this with then, you know, a, a hardware piece of device, like the actual sorting mechanism. Um, and, you know, I think that that in itself is a valuable experience. Um, just knowing like what I want to do long term. Um, and even though I don't think that I'll necessarily ever be on the like coding coding side of AI in the future, I think being having like taken up that perspective and being able to work with the people who do know that um, where I'm coming from hardware and they're coming from computer science um, to serve as like a bridge between them. I think it was a great experience and I don't regret my time in the program at all. Um, really think I learned a lot um, and had a great time. It was one of the things um, that i put on my college application um, for, you know, anyone who's watching, if they are familiar with the common application, it's like on the list of 10 activities, um, you get to cho choose the 10 probably most important activities to you. Um, and I think the Inspired AI program was, uh, the one-on-one -on -one program at least was like uh, fourth or fifth up there because ultimately I it, it was just a good opportunity to learn about, um, you know, AI um, and get, some like dip your toe into the water of the recent world of research. Um, even though I didn't end up pursue, uh, you know, pursuing getting my paper published, um, I thought that it was valuable to me or to 
for for me as an applicant to college that uh, people knew I had at least some familiarity with it. Um, where it really helped me actually was prior to um, you know I, I, because I took this the summer of my sophomore year when I was applying for uh, research related things and internships junior year. This was like one of the things that definitely stood out there, um, and that helped me secure a, an internship. Um, my going into my junior to senior summer. Um, which ultimately ended up being like the number one thing on my common applications. I ended up pursuing a uh, robotic prosthesis um, internship um, at MIT. Um, it was part of the MIT Media Labs uh, biomechatronics group. Um, they basically built robotic prostheses for patients who had lost their limbs. Um, and these patients were able to uh, remotely or control these devices based uh, using basically their brain. Um, it was fascinating to just see how they could uh, walk on their walk again, basically. Um, these are all lower limb amputees. Research always comes up if you're a STEM person. It's like, oh, well, you got to do research. That's kind of important for people who are applying to, who want to pursue college in the future um, and just personal aspirations. Um, I think that, you know, getting uh, base exposure to any field that you may be tangentially interested in is really important. So Inspired AI's uh, scholar program is great for that. Um, and then beyond that, if you really, you think you're still interested and really enjoy that, um, then pursuing like a low level, um, you know, in, in program where you can, you know, the product that you're able to put out is ultimately, a, you know, related to how much time you put in the program, like Inspire AI's one-on-one -on -one program is really a valuable experience. Um, I think that finding research is very hard in high school um, because people are often like, oh, you need connections or you need a base level of knowledge. But I feel like Inspired AI's one-on-one -on -one program um, is great for anyone who doesn't necessarily have uh, one of those two things. Um, it's a really warm environment, easy to get into. Um, and again, the time that you put in is ultimately proportional to the like quality of the product that comes out of it. Um, environments like that are really where um, valuable to high school, high school students of uh, whether you're a freshman just entering or you're a junior looking for um, that, you know, big project or internship going into college application season.